Look how dirty this thing is. Look at how dirty this thing is. Look at all this crap I cleaned out of my Sawgrass SG500. I'm glad I did this cleaning. I feel like my print is gonna last forever now. I'm so happy I did this. Boom, wait a minute, just like that. Boom, 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 boom. just like that. Hey, 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 productions, just like that. Like, comment, subscribe, just like that. Boom, wait a minute, just like that. Hey, Dub, you ready? Wait a minute. What's up everybody, Alan Wade here, and today I'm going to show you how to do some maintenance on your Sawgrass SG500 or SG1000 sublimation printer. Guys, if you're like me and you've had your printer for a while now, you're probably wondering, um, with the DTG printers, we have to clean the maintenance stations, there's daily maintenance required, there's monthly maintenance required, there's weekly maintenance required, but with these Sawgrasses, it doesn't seem like there's any maintenance required but to change the ink cartridge. So today I'm going to show you guys how to clean the substation or the maintenance station or the capping station right on the side of the printer. Here are the products that we're going to need to achieve what we're trying to do here. From as you're looking left to right we have some printhead cleaning solution that I got off of Amazon. Then we have a little swab, a maintenance station cleaning swab that I got from Amazon. Really inexpensive, both items. Then we have some lint-free wipes, lint-free wipes. And I cut this one up into three pieces, two small and one big one. And then finally we have a flathead screwdriver. And we're going to use that to trick the um, SG500 into thinking that the top part, the hood, is down. All right, and that's how we're going to get our maintenance station, our, our print heads rather, to slide over and, um, and, and, and expose the maintenance station. All right, so here is our Sawgrass SG500. And pay attention right here. We have our power cord. We're going to need to utilize this power cord in order to cut power when the print head slides over. So this is how we're going to do it. First, we're going to reach to the front and we're going to turn off our printer. All right. Wait till it's fully turned off and now it's off then we're going to open up the head of the printer all right got the head open and there's a little divot right here a little clip in the front and that slides into this notch right here and what that does is it tells the printer that this top is closed so we're going to take our fl uh, flathead screwdriver and we're going to position it right into this little point right here and we're gonna push this little trigger type of thing right here you, you'll see it when you open it up and what I like to do is I like to loosen this I like to pull the power cord out a little bit to make it easier to come out because as soon as we turn the power on after it starts up it's gonna move the print head over to this side exposing the capping station and you're gonna have to cut the power so that the print head stops all right, now, if you don't do this fast enough, it's gonna slide right over real fast, so you gotta be fast enough. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so now I'm gonna position my, turn the power on, all right. I might have pulled the power cord out a little bit. All right, here we go. Turn the power on. All right, position my hand to pull the power cord. Let it start up. There we go. Now as soon as that print head slides over, I'm gonna pull the power cord. Pull the cord, all right? And that locks it in place, and that exposes the maintenance station that we wanna clean. All right guys, now, I did not anticipate that this station would be this dirty. All right, let me, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Right here on the rail system, I have a buildup of ink. This is pretty dirty. This wheel right here. This right here is filthy. And this one right here is dirty too. So we're going to clean up all that. And what that's going to do is that's going to make it so that our prints come out cleaner and we don't have any issues. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dip my applicator inside the solution a little bit making sure I don't have too much, all right? If you have a small container, like a small lid or something, you wanna pour some in there, that's even better, all right? Make sure you don't drip any of that in there. I just have it over here just for demonstration purposes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean the first station right here, which is all the way over here. 
I'm just gonna wipe around it, cleaning that station, and I'm gonna try to get that applicator inside of there to uh, kind of like break up any any ink that might be in there. All right, clean all that up. See that dirt and that build up that ink. Now I'm gonna clean the second one right here, and you kind of want to get a lot of the solution in this one. You want to get a lot in there. You want to. We want this to be really, really wet, because as you guys can see, this thing is really, really dirty. So I'm actually going to get another applicator, and I'm going to um, clean this one thoroughly. All right. Let me cut. Give me a second, because this is this is filthy right here. All right, I'm back. So before I tackle that, I'm going to clean the rod right here. This this part right here. Wipe that off, clean up that dry ink that's dried up on there. See that came off right there nice and easy? Nice. All right, make sure that that's nice and clean, and then wipe it off with my lint-free wipe. Right here. Grab my lint-free wipe, and just wipe, dab that off. Or you can get a, or you can get a clean, a clean uh, applicator and wipe it off with that wipe it clean with that all right but this one right here i want to get as wet as possible i want to dampen that up a whole lot so i'm just going to grab some solution with my applicator and try to make sure it falls in there try to get that nice and wet all right i'm gonna pour some solution out of my lid and i'm going to repeat that process repeat that process until it gets nice and lubricated and there's a bunch of cleaning solution inside of that cap and station right there because that is filthy i gotta i gotta tell you guys i did not anticipate it being this this filthy right here so let's so go ahead and clean that out keep on cleaning it as much as i can all right and you guys do the same thing keep on cleaning yours as much as you can get all of that nasty built up ink out of there as much as possible all right now if you guys notice right here there's a little bit of grease on that rail system so and the grease has ink on it so i'm just going to wipe this grease off and i actually got i'm going to wipe this grease off and i'm going to reapply some new grease all right this is the same type of maintenance you do on the rico r1000 dtg printer all right, see, that rail was disgusting looking. All right, so I actually have some grease right here. Just the grease that came with the Rico. I would imagine that you can get some off of um, Amazon and uh, use that, but I didn't anticipate, like I said, that being this, this dirty. So I'm just gonna take another smaller applicator and I'm gonna apply some new grease to the rail because I wiped off all the old grease. All right. Apply some new grease to that rail right there. Out with the old and in with the new. I'm pretty satisfied with the job that I did right now, but one more thing we're going to do is with the power disconnected, this print head is pretty much free to move back and forth. Don't push it all the way back there because it could get stuck. But I'm just going to move this over a little bit, almost all the way. And then I'm going to wipe off the other half of this rod right here in the front that the print head slides across. Wipe the old grease off. And I'm just going to put some new grease on there. Um, and then after I put the new grease on there, I'm going to just... Uh, make it go back and forth once or twice to make sure the grease is nice and applied. All right, so what I'm doing, I'm just putting some grease on the applicator right here, and then I'm just wiping it on here. I know some of you guys are going to think, can I use petroleum jelly? I don't know. I wouldn't suggest it because I don't know what type of grease this is, but I wouldn't suggest using that. I would just go ahead and get some printer grease from off of uh, Amazon. Not sure what this stuff is called. This is called Rico grease, um, same stuff that I use for my Rico R1000. And if it wasn't for me getting a DTG printer, I wouldn't know how to do this stuff, guys. But they show you how to um, clean print heads and stuff as part of your maintenance for your DTG printer. So I guess that's a good thing about having a um, DTG printer.
you're doing stuff to your other printers that you didn't even know that you could do. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna, um, I'm pretty satisfied with that. It looks nice and clean over there, cleaner than when I first opened it up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to close the print head door. I mean the top of the printer, of course. And I'm gonna um, just position it back. I'm gonna grab the cord, plug it back in and turn it on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a couple print, a uh, couple cleaning cycles and we should be good to go and have a nice clean SG500 or SG1000 sublimation printer and ready to use again. Gonna do a couple test prints and we're good to go guys. And guys, this video would be kind of incomplete if I didn't show you this portion. As you guys see, I'm low on black ink, don't mind that. But I'm gonna hit menu. Let me wake this thing back up. Wake up, wake up, okay. I'm gonna hit menu and then I'm going to go to print features, printer features. Then I'm gonna to go to list slash test print. Okay, I'm gonna go down. Then I'm gonna go head cleaning. You can do head flushing, head cleaning. All right, so head cleaning and then head flushing and then nozzle check pattern. All right, in that order. So I'm just gonna do the head cleaning, all heads. Okay, start, okay. I'm gonna let that run. Yep. So after you've uh, done your head cleaning, it's gonna ask you if you wanna print a nozzle check pattern. I'm gonna hit exit because I don't wanna do that right now. Um, so I'm gonna hit escape. And you guys can go ahead and flush your head, head flushing. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna flush all the ink out of your head. So I don't wanna do that. So I am just gonna go ahead and um, put nozzle check, uh, nozzle check pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead, okay, and I'm gonna press print. Um, when you do this, you wanna change your printer paper so you don't waste sublimation paper, all right? So make sure you put some eight and a half by 11 sublimation paper in there and just go ahead and press print, all right? Change the paper size from tray one to eight and a half by 11 plain paper. So let's hit change and in the tray, we're gonna go from custom to eight and a half by 11, all right? And hit okay, and then we're gonna come down here and then we're gonna put uh, plain paper. All right, boom, plain paper. All right, escape, and there we go. Just gonna do a test print. I'm gonna see what we got. All right, test print. And as you guys can see, all the nozzles are clear, clean, and ready to sublimate. Ready to go, baby. Ready to go as soon as we Get some more black ink. That shouldn't matter though. We're, we're fine. We're fine. Um, we could still print a bunch of jobs with this black ink glow, but I'm going to order some black ink now. <laughs> now, I showed you how to use it. I showed you how to clean it. If you've not purchased your Sawgrass SG500 or SG1000 yet, use my heat transfer warehouse link in the description down below to purchase yours today. You know it's going to last a long time because you know how to use it. You know how to maintain it. You know how to clean it. You know how to do nozzle checks. You know how to clean the capping station, you know how to clean the, the line. I showed you all that stuff. So you know it's gonna last a long time and you're gonna be in business for a long time making lots of money. So use my heat transfer house link in the description down below to purchase yours today. So there you have it guys, we are ready to go and we can be rest assured that our Sawgrass SG500 and SG1000s are going to run for even more years and years and years and make us more and more money to come guys. Very, very excited when something like this, when you learn something like this because you know that you can depend on your device and it's gonna last you a long time, especially, especially when you know how to maintain it and you know how to clean it. So I'm gonna do the same process on my SG1000 so you guys do the same thing. I doubt if you guys got both machines like me, but for demonstration purposes and to show you guys what I do and how to do it, I have both machines, so I'm gonna do the same on my SG1000. Guys, I know I'm responsible for a lot of you guys buying the SG1000 and SG500, so I just thought this video was necessary to show you guys how to get the most life out of your machine. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Share this video out with your friends that have sublimation printers so that they can keep their businesses going so that they won't have to go out and buy another one when they could have easily just fixed the problem themselves. I think a lot of people don't know how to fix these problems themselves so they go out and they either buy another whole nother unit 
or they just stop sublimating altogether and say they don't like the unit. But guys, saw it here. Close in person. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Adub Productions. Follow me on Facebook, Adub Productions. Follow me on TikTok, Adub Productions. And let me know how you enjoyed, if you enjoyed this video and if you got any use out of it. Thank you so much for watching. Alan Wade here again with another video. And I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Peace. Turn up that. Crank it up. While I listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best, baby.